training materials, still the training materials for the mother tongue translators, and training materials for our field translators, people, I'm sorry, for our field trainers, international field trainers, who go out and explain to people um, the need and the process of church-owned Bible translation, because we want the churches to take ownership of the translation work and the translation um, checking and um, saying whether this translation is adequate or we need more, we need to do more work on it. And there are great things happening around the world with people doing translation, even um, people coming to Christ because of um, because of this work. And um, as far as Ed. Um, He's still doing Uber some, um, working on the car, and um, keeping, helping me with computer issues. Uh, yeah, all kinds of computer stuff he takes care of for me. <laughs> Any specific prayer requests? Um, yes, for wisdom with organizing the materials for the field trainers so okay. that they can easily find what they need. Thank Any you. specific field or just pretty general where you're at? Do you I'm sorry. Okay, no, no Southeast specific Asia? field. They're all over. all over. The trainers are all over the world. But actually, there is one field re prayer request. I still need to get my e visa for Kenya. I'll be going to Kenya in March for an orthography conference. It's a conference where we'll be talking about how to help people develop uh, writing systems for their languages. Uh, so I'll be there for just over a week in uh, just north of Nairobi. Okay, my son's off in to March? Nairobi in, in, March. in March as well with a missions trip. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I don't cool. know, you know the date? Fourth. Fourth, he leaves the fourth to go there. He's got a team of about 13 people he's taking. Wow, well, what will they be doing? They, he said they were going to be doing building. They're, they're building a, uh, just exactly what, but they've worked with a number of villages, uh, supplying water, Supplying a, a sewing facility, uh, and this is going to be a building project. Yeah, that's great. Nick, you got your work cut out for you. We're going to have to pray for Susan, for Ed, for these folk who are involved in translation, and for a trip to Kenya. That's quite a quite a lot. But uh, yeah. you pray. I'm getting, I'm getting writer's cramp. <laughs> Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for this day and this opportunity to come and. And worship you, Father. We just pray, Father, for our Holy Spirit to guide us, give us our uh, hearts to be open to what we hear. And Father, just thank you for Susan and Ed and their ministry. We pray, Father, if you'll be with Susan as they, and Ed as they travel to Africa in March. Uh, pray for safe traveling mercies. And Father, we just pray for uh, things that come together for the translation, for the uh, translators, and for the trainers, Father, that they'll be able to find what they need in the, when they do their research. Father, we just pray for a continued uh, healing for Janet. Father, we pray these things in your son's holy name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon, we're glad you're here. We missed you. Amen. Yeah. You look like you're ready for racquetball, so just let me know what time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can sit and watch a game. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd be on the court. Uh, I was going to see my wife uh, improving. Both of you went through uh, dark water there that was, that was tough okay <coughs> so uh mark you want to just pray for these two ladies would you mind sure. dear heavenly father thank you for bringing uh, sharon and terry back into uh, the church lord for for the healing there and lord we ask that you would just continue to strengthen them lord we uh we thank you for their fellowship and for their love and, and for their witness of you and we praise you Father, just continue with us as we uh, worship, as we continue to look into your word. Help our hearts to be tender to you. We need your Holy Spirit to be our teacher, to be our comforter, to be the one who convicts and challenges and leads and guides. We evoke his presence here that you would uh, minister to us here at Valley Bible Church in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we've got a couple of songs. First one, well, did I? Yeah, we listen to the first one, then we'll stand for the other two. Okay, this, I like this song. You may not be a rap 
kind person, uh, I'm not. But I, this guy, I just happen to like him as an artist, and I really like what he has to say. So hang in there, and no, not too much boogieing, okay? Try not to. It's not the halftime show. Maybe midnight or midday, never early, never late. He gon' stand by what he claimed, lived enough life to say. I heard your heart, I see your pain, out in the dark, out in the rain. You're so alone, you're so afraid, I heard you pray.
had a reason for saying when you pray enter your closet pray to your father who is in secret and your father who is in secret will reward you openly something about 
closet prayer. What do you think we mean by closet prayer? Blocking everything else out. Got to block things out, okay? And I believe in praying when you're riding the car and praying for the guy to cut you off and praying when I'm, you know, uh, sitting down, standing up, eating, whatever. But there needs to be time of focus with God. Uh, yeah, today's lesson we read from James, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Are my prayers effective and fervent? Uh, I have a lot of people I pray for, and I've sort of been trying to, to not just pray for a list, but pray for the individual. You track what I'm saying here. But here's the question I want to ask you. How long did you spend with God, let's say, in the last 24 hours? And you don't have to tell me, but that's a kind of a rhetorical question. Do you spend time with God on a regular basis, and that is a sacrosanct time. That is a time that's non-negotiable. You know, Paul talks about us increasing in the knowledge of God. I get to know people because I spend time with them. That's just a, a non-brainer. The people I spend time with, other people, I get to know. And, and Paul pushes the theme of knowing God again and again and again in the scriptures. And we need to move from somebody being informed about God, which a lot of people are, okay? A lot of people know about God. I remember being, uh, I think I shared with you now, uh, final exam in theology was simply one question for two and a half hours. Tell me all you know about God. Well, there's volumes written on that, so it shouldn't be really hard to do if you've been studying, but how well do I know God? Am I simply informed? Have I made my acquaintance with Him? Obviously, there needs to be a starting point where I know God as personal Savior. I understand the gospel that Christ died for my sins and that He rose again. That, that's something I need to be acquainted with, usually up here, but it's got to come deeper. It's got to get into my heart. It's got to become <coughs> knowledge. And uh, the word for knowledge in the scriptures is pretty uh, extensive. Uh, Epigenosco, okay, for what it's worth. It's advanced knowledge, it's precise knowledge, it's accurate knowledge, it's correct knowledge. It's knowledge involving participation. It's knowledge that is intimate, experiential, gained through direct, first-hand, personal experience. I don't have first-hand, personal experience with God unless I've blocked out that time with Him. So here's my challenge. Do you spend your time with God every day? Do you have a time blocked out for Him? We've said this before. If you want to hold on to God through the tough times, you need to be with Him during the smooth times. Don't suddenly decide, oh, well, now I need God because I'm going through a rough time. I need to have that constant relationship with God. And it comes from me being disciplined in prayer. My challenge is I would like you to increase your time of prayer per day. Maybe add a few more missionaries onto your list. Maybe add some of the folks that you have me back with, folks at work. Lord, I'm going to begin to spend more time on you, but start also with understanding God. I like to start, not that's original with me, looking at God and thanking Him for who He is, His attributes, His person, going to my family, and then going to the material blessings I've received, just to introduce thanks before God. God wants us to know Him. Paul says in Philippians 3.10, it's the Amplified Version, for my determined purpose, we could spend a long time just talking about those two words, determined purpose. Yeah. My determined purpose is that I may know Him, that I may deeply and progressively become more and more intimately acquainted, acquainted with Him, perceiving, recognizing, and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. That is beautifully put. The Amplified Bible. I need to go, no God, not somebody as high God, how you doing, see you around. <laughs> not good enough, people. And my challenge is, listen, will you determine to get to know God better? Are you better acquainted with God now than you were, say, six months ago? Or ten years ago? I had a family in our church back in, uh, in New Jersey, and they kind of let me know that they had reached their level of spirituality and that's as far as they were prepared to go. <laughs> ah. 
ties it actually with what Tony was saying earlier, and, and that verse from Revelation. They lost their first love. Gonna, gonna love you this much, God. Sorry, no more, no further. No. Paul's talking about us increasing in a deeper, more progressive, more intimate acquaintance with God. I need to make this a priority, people. I cannot stress this enough. If you're a morning person, get up half an hour earlier if you're not doing this. If you're a night person, set some time aside where you can meet with God, read His Word, pray, get to know your Heavenly Father. People who know their God, they will be strong and do great things. God wants us to know Him. Knowing God and knowing what it is that God wants me to know. That's what I should spend my lifetime doing. Knowing God and knowing what it is He wants me to know. Paul again says that I may know Him, the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering. I need to know God. How well do you know your husband, your wife, you know them well after a lot of years, you know, because you spend time with them. We don't know strangers because there's no time element. Time is essential in relating to God in this regard. And so Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, here's Paul's prayer. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. That spirit of wisdom and revelation is that we may know him better. He wants us to be wise and knowledgeable in the need, um, in, in, sorry, the wisdom and, uh, and understanding. I have got to get to know God better. And friend, don't complain when you're going through difficult times that your faith wavers. It sometimes does, but if I have that link with God, that's what's going to hold me fast. Mm -hmm. He goes on to say, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. You may see clearly that you may know three things, Sheriff. The hope which is called you, his power to us believe, who believe. And the third thing is, I may have, am I going on to that third one? We'll see in a minute. Okay, so going back to knowledge. Can I say that my knowledge of God is increasing? I hope so, I pray so. Let's not, like that couple, and by God's good grace, they really came through to God after a while. They, they got to understand, hey, there's more to, more to Christianity than just stopping here and thinking, yeah, I'm saved, I've done this much, I'm not going any further with God. <laughs> Had a friend in our game, going back to our church, a guy, a young man, Jody, he, from a little kid, was interested in one thing, and that was flying. He had books on flying. He was really into this whole issue of flying. <clears throat> and he knew a lot about flying. Today he flies a Huey helicopter out of San Diego. Huey, if you know the history of you, I mean, it came up basically in, in, in Vietnam. This became the K car, the kill cars that were. Warfare kind of switched all around Vietnam from the bombers just going in and strafing and then the infantry mopping up to these guys going in and basically taking care of the enemy. Very sophisticated today, obviously after 30, 40 years. To replace the horse in the artillery. All right, yeah, all right, good. Good, good, uh, good parallel there. The Huey Echo, he used to know about it theoretically. He used to know about this simply as being a spectator. He became a, uh, a practical participator in flying. Wow, he now knows those things. He knows how to move that thing. You know, that's a, that's like an hour bombing. Some of the top paid guys with the pilots of helicopters. It's not an easy thing to do. But my point being, he had to move from simply being up here to doing it, and that's part of how I get to know God better is being involved with what God's doing. <coughs> get involved again. Having Susan here, you know, get involved in some missionary. You adopt somebody and get involved in showing your interest in helping them, finding out what their needs are, what their financial and uh, spiritual and prayer needs are. <coughs> We're talking about knowing God in a precise, advanced, accurate, correct way, participating, knowledge that is intimate, experiential, gained through direct, first-hand, personal knowledge. Do I know God? Well, I should, and I should be looking to know Him even better. 
pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened that you may know. This word is, is, is a, a vast word, not simply acquaintance with, but an intimate, direct knowledge with God. What does he want us to know? Three things. He wants to know the hope of his calling, the riches of his inheritance, and the power which he demonstrated when he raised Christ from the dead. Okay? The hope the riches, the power. So if you want just something to go on with your prayer time, start by saying, God, I want to know the hope of my calling. Our hope, okay, we've said this a number of times, is not simply a hope so. It's an internal realization. Inside my life, I know this to be true. And outside, I'm waiting to see it come true. It's an internal realization. This is what God has said. This is what God wants to happen and do. And outside I wait for him to work. That song that Toby Mac sang. Maybe midnight, maybe whenever it was. But he's going to come through someday, okay? He will come through. Let's understand that as our hope. The hope to which we're called. We spent a long time talking about our calling uh, in the past. We were doing it with the men's meeting a, a year or three ago. Saying that God's calling to me is personal. He nailed me. He got my name. Before the foundation of the world, he had me in mind. Wow! Not just me, every one of us, okay? Personal God, I know you by your name. I have redeemed you. God has called you for this time to be a servant of the living God. To be effective where you are in your prayer life. If you're not out there, you know, ministering, um, and then let me just, we're all ministers. Some of us are more in the limelight than others. Your ministry may be prayer, encouragement, sending cards. I know that Carolyn does that. Just encouraging people, people who gave. Somebody gave me a gift. Thank you, whoever it was. It was anonymous. But, you know, just encouragement. That may be your gift. Serving, we touched again on the church. All those gifts that God gives us to use. That's what I'm called to. For his purpose, not mine. That's a tough one, because I'd like to do what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it, for the reason I want to do it. And that's me, I, five times there, okay? No! God, what is your will? What is your way for me today? Wake up in the morning and say, God, thanks for this day. Got any space for me today? Help me to find it. Help me to do it with all my heart. You want to know the hope by calling the second aspect of his prayer, the riches of his glorious inheritance. And the, the Greek goes both ways here. Okay? I'm not a Greek scholar, so I, I use the Greek simply because I read about it. This could be his. We are his inheritance or he is our inheritance. It's not clear in, in the original. But both are yahoo, you know, a situation. God looks at me as being somebody he bought that I'm in his inheritance. Wow, that's very cool. But I have all of God. Don't sell yourself short as to what God has. But on top of it is, is that what we have in God by way of his riches remains unexplored. We haven't gotten, and we never will get to the depth of this, but some of us aren't even worried. We like that family and said, oh God, that's as far as I'm going. No, there's a lot more. And uh, if you follow the news, this uh, pebble mine has been in the news for a lot of years, okay? I don't know if you know about it. I think uh, maybe you've spoken about it before. Okay, 10 billion tons of recoverable ore in southwest uh, Alaska. Now, they want to get to it, all right? Those stats kind of blow us away. 80 billion pounds of copper, 107 uh, million ounces of gold, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6. It's worth an estimate 400 billion under the ground there. They want it. They ain't getting it yet. Uh, a group called the EPA are uh, saying you can't dig up the land. So uh, I'm not going to go into the politics of where they should get that. My point being, God says he's got this enormous amount of riches for us. We're only scratching the surface. We should wake up and say, wow, God, I'm a child of the king. I'm a father. You are my father. I have your inheritance. I received it through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that inheritance is incorruptible. Okay, Jesus talks about our treasures being not subject to decay, moth, rust, thievery. It's undefiled. There's not a stain on what our God gives me. 
Great story in Zechariah, okay, chapter 12, where Satan's accusing the priest, his name is Joshua, accusing him, and God puts a brand new linen robe on him, pure white. I'm right with God because of Christ, people. Don't let Satan keep throwing into your mind how bad you are and how you did this or that or the other. If you're forgiven, you're forgiven. Rejoice in that truth. That is what God's given us. Undefiled fades not away. Our hopes, friends, dreams all fade, desert us. But what I have in God does not go away. I have an eternal life beginning now through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's reserved. <laughs> Remember when they put Paul in the prison? How they had all these guards there? I think there were like 48 when you, you, you count up the, the, the Roman numbers. 48 guys to look after him to make sure he didn't escape. Well, that's kind of when my illustration form's done. He did escape. But with God, it's not going to go anywhere. He's guarding us. He's not going to, he's going to make sure we are totally secure. We have an inheritance in corruptible, undefiled, Praise our way reserved in heaven for us who are kept by the power of God. How do I know the power of God? I've spent time today tapping into the power of God. I think it was Joe who gave us the illustration where he, there was something plugged in the wall. He unplugged and said, there's no more power here. It's not going to work. Why? Well, the source is important. My source of my life, and again, my challenge to us as a church, get on your knees figuratively speaking, be in prayer. Say, God, I'm going to make this part of my day, and I'm going to make it a bigger part of my day. You know, one of the, the blessings of coming up here every week is that Terry and I have a lot of time to pray. And going and coming, we pray. Uh, Terry went through the map today, you know, praying for our kids and our grandkids. That takes a long time as it is. But hey, I'm going to pray. You took your time in the car, pray. It doesn't have to be, you know, because you're traveling for a long distance. Just when you get in the car, pray. Pray for your family. This is your legacy. This is what you will leave behind ultimately. And then God wants us to know his power. Being down the road before, two words for power that we could use. One is uh, krakos, krak kratos. Okay, and krakatoa. Thank you. Uh, the volcano, just an expression of power. That's one word. But here in this passage, he's talking about dynamis or dynamite. The difference between Krakatoa, which was the volcano that uh, erupted in 18... 1838. 38. Okay, yeah. I mean, it was just a blast of power. Magnificent demonstration of power. I mean, unbelievable. You read about yeah, what happened in that explosion. And uh, the one thing I do remember was the dust flowed around the, around the atmosphere for two years just to get rid of the dust from that explosion. That's just manifest power. But when Paul talks about power here, he's talking about functional power. Okay, something that is going to take place or occur because of this power. It's not just manifest, it has a purpose. You know, dynamite was used to to open up roads and railways, this sort of thing. Uh, uh, there's a purpose behind it. Not just an expression of power, but a purposeful power. Paul says, learn to know that, that we may know the incomparable great power for us to believe. Not praying simply that we have power, but that we have power to be aware of what God has for us. God, help me to have the power, to have the revelation, the understanding, what you're doing, what you want me to do. Don't sell yourself sore shortly. Backtracking again, but I think it's good to repeat ourselves. We look at judgment more often than not as being negative. It's not always negative. In fact, it should be positive. I make judgments. I say to, say to Jake, hey, great job today. That's a positive criticism, positive judgment. God will give us positive judgment. He will be, I believe, very clear. He'll remember, hey, high five for what you did that day or this day. God is into the... They, yeah. When they, they do these acrobatics, they say 9.9. Okay. That's positive. Okay, very positive. Okay. Are we heading for the 10, you know? Uh, to get that. Who was that young uh, gymnast to end up straight 10? Not the man, That's the goal. All right, so... He prayed for an awareness of what he had. And this awareness of what God has is exceeding abundant. Now, you may have heard this illustration before. NASA, in 1972, launched Pioneer 10. 
Send me to go to Jupiter and get some pictures. Why do you get Ted got caught in the gravitational pull of Jupiter and it threw Pioneer into the universe? And for 30 years, the little 8 watt transmitter radio kept pushing pictures of our universe back to NASA. They have them. Yeah, that's an exceeding abundant power. An 8 watt uh, radio transmitter? And for 30 years, it's giving us information of the universe. It's over and above. The, 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 the word here is like when I throw something further than you can reach it, okay? When you're, uh, it's like, uh, you know, some of these football players, I don't believe the quarterback 70 yard pass. Give me a break, man. You know, and, and hitting the mark. Well, that's the kind of thing God's talking about. Compare my throw to, you know, to Tom Brady or or to Burrow, or um, who's the latest guy? Uh, the new guy on the block, Stafford. this one, Super Bowl. Stafford. Stafford, yeah. I mean, you know, God talks about a super abundance. We are there to tap into it, and I will not tap into it unless I say to God, God, I need to spend some time tapping in. So here's the challenge. Your prayer time. What if I ask you next week? Huh? Please write down how long you spent with it. No, I'm not really going to do that. But it would be great to know that you spend time with God, developing that relationship with Him. You can put a prayer request up on the website. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you can read those too on the website. God's power is sufficient for every need. None of us has to live a defeated life, but those who do not make use of God's available power will live miserable lives. How do I plug into that power source, people? What's the word? Prayer. Prayer. And so as we look at Paul's passion to know God, to whom to know is eternal life, we need to tap into the power of God. When God talks about the eternal life, it's not a concept, a principle, it's a person. Not some cosmic thing, but a relationship that I develop because I pray, pray. The source and the substance of the life is Christ. He's our present possession for this life. I need to know God. That's what we're pushing for. Lord, please help me to know you better than I do today. So next week, test, okay? Uh, bring your test books, and we'll see if you know God better. That's the idea. Okay, we're going to pray together. Father in heaven, thanks for the word of truth, for the riches of our inheritance, for the exceeding greatness of your power, for the hope that is eternal. Thank you that these are things you give us. Help us to tap in to who you are and what you have for us this week. Oh God, please bless our church. Encourage us to walk worthy of the calling that you've placed on each one of us to be men and women of God, to be representatives of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right, I don't think we've got any more songs, do we? I'm going to give you the three. All right, thank you.